Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith from Storyville Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve this fun watercolor edit. To do an edit like this, you will need the watercolor collection. Anyway, so this is where we are going to end, and this is where we got started. This is my beautiful sister, and I had so much fun turning her image into a wonderful watercolor style painting. So the first thing we're going to do is run the watercolor action, but you guys, in order to run it, make sure you go to image in mode. I don't know if you can quite see that at the top, but it's the first option under image mode and make sure you're in the eight bits channel or it will not run properly or at all for that matter. Um, so we have that selected and then I'm going to highlight the watercolor action and hit play. It will take a little bit of time to load because I save these as smart filters, so you can go back and make adjustments if you need to, to each of the filters. So as we wait, we'll just have my sister keep staring at us with her beautiful eyes. And it should be almost done. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, it turned um, this image into a nice watercolor base. If you want it to be more intense, you guys can always flatten the image and rerun it. Or if it's too intense for you, you can decrease the opacity and you can also click on these um, little arrow things and change each layer if you feel the need to. I'm going to keep it as is because I love it. Um, and I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this watercolor base, so Command J, and then I want to invert the mask, Command I, so you have a black mask. And I'm going to need to bring in our watercolor paper. So to do that, here's some examples of the watercolor brushes. Sorry, a little sidetracked. Um, we have some more complex brushes and then basic ones that you can use or kind of make your own complex. Um, watercolor brush thing and we also have a bunch of words and phrases and brushes so now i'm going to type in watercolor paper and make sure it's the jpeg <laughs> i have them saved as psd files too in case i needed to go back and change anything i am going to go with the um, storyville watercolor paper five and I'm just going to hold down the shift key and pull on these arrows to extend. Oops, that was a little too far. Let me zoom out. Just holding the shift and you can adjust these to fit your image perfectly. And also I started this package with 10 colors, but you can also make any adjustments to these changing the colors. And to do that, I would just grab a hue and saturation adjustment layer, hit the downward arrow, and you can kind of make other watercolor tones. You can desaturate, increase it, whatever you want. But we are not going to use that there because um, we don't need to. Uh, so make sure that you pull the watercolor paper under this base layer copy. And then we're going to want to click on the black mask. And I'm going to go over to the brushes. Um, to load the brushes, guys, click on this little down arrow next to your brush and hit this gear and import brushes. And that's all you have to do. Make sure your file is unzipped first before you go loading. Once they're loaded in, you're going to have all of these fun brushes. Um, I had so much fun making these, and I hope you love them as much as I do. So for this image, I am going to go ahead and um, select the Storyville Watercolor 20. And you can, I'm going to show you how it comes on at different opacities. So this is full on at 100, which I love. Um, and pretty much that's done. Uh, you could be done right there. You could also start out smaller um, at a lower opacity. And you could come in and just stack different brushes. And just kind of build it up to your liking. I also wanted to show you these fun scatter brushes that I created. Let me find them. There's so many brushes. Okay, we'll go with the heart. So I have a scattered heart brush. Whoops. I'm just going to size that down a little and then boom, you can add as many hearts as you want. 
I'm being extreme here so you can really see. Or you can get in and make these little details so you have little watercolor parts coming around. And you can also adjust the opacity to make it very subtle or very intense, whatever you like. And we have 15 different brushes like that. So it's super fun and it helps add a lot of dimension to your image. Um, as I showed you more of the complex brushes, I also have a bunch of uh, more basic brushes, if you will. You can go in and select, I'll just select 79 here cancel and make sure that is selected on the base um, the black layer there and I come in here when I'm using these at lower opacities and I just kind of click around I grab different brushes whoop, size them you can play around with different opacities for each brush and just kind of build um, upon it and make I don't know make your own complex watercolor image can be just as fun it takes a little bit more time to do so if that's not something you're really wanting to do I would stick to the first 20 brushes it makes life a lot easier but there is also the fun like hearts I have a couple hearts in here so let's get rid of these You saw the scattered brush, and now this is one of the bigger ones. Woo! What is going on there? Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to crank that up at 100% opacity, and we have a heart. And then if you want it to kind of feather out a little bit, decrease the opacity, make it bigger. Boom. And then if you wanted to add the scattered hearts into this, that would really just top it off. i got to find it. There we go. And more fun. I like them when they're a little bit smaller and not as noticeable. Boom. And there you have it. Okay, so now getting back to where we started, I believe I grabbed the watercolor brush number 20, so we're going to go for that again. If I can find it. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to have this at 100% opacity. I'm clicked on the black layer mask. I have a white brush selected. And there we go. There's my cute little sister. I think I want to do it a little bit bigger. And then I want to use a word brush. So it is just as easy as these paint brushes um, for the watercolor. So what do I want to choose? I believe I had You Are Beautiful because she is. I just love my sister. And for this, you can do it either on this um, black layer mask. Sometimes it looks kind of cool, and sometimes it's a little harder to see depending on the back, um, your original image. And for that, it's a little hard to see on here. You can put it really anywhere. I guess you could see it up top better. But for this particular image, I'm going to click on this other watercolor, or I'm sorry, I'm going to click on the paper it's and again, you can adjust the opacity however you like. Um, I'm going to probably crank it down. You're beautiful. See, I just love that. Um, I'm going to do it probably about 20-ish percent, 24 percent, and size this down. You can increase and decrease the size of your brushes with the bracket keys. So the left bracket key decreases, and then the right one increases. Here we go. Maybe I should turn that up just a little bit more so you can see it. Okay, and then the final finishing touch, you go back into the actions and you click the polish and make sure you're on the top layer there. Hit play and voila. You can also open this up and make adjustments. You can add um, more of a blend if you wanted, increase that. You could have a matte finish if you like, and you can also adjust these layers to whatever um, you see fit. It just kind of helps pull the whole image together. And there we are. Thanks for watching, guys. You can find everything I used here at www.storyvillephotography.com. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.